Once the most admired woman in the world, she seems to have a deep lack of love in her personal life. Audrey was born on April 4, 1929 in Nine Ells, Belgium, to a father of British origins and a Dutch mother. Her birth name was Audrey Kathleen Rustin and she was also known to her family as Adrentia. Audrey's father is, Joseph Victor Anthony Rustin, a British subject who was born in Auschwitz, Bohemia, Austria-Hungary. Her mother, Baroness, Ella van Heemstra, is from an ancient aristocratic Dutch family. Audrey's parents married in September 1926 and moved to Europe. After that, they moved between several countries, namely Belgium, the Netherlands, and Britain, until they settled in the town of Linkbeek in Brussels in 1932. Audrey Hepburn's childhood was quiet and distinguished, and in addition to having multiple origins, Audrey learned several languages as a result of her parents' frequent movements, Dutch, English, French, Spanish, and Italian. She learned English and Dutch from her parents and later acquired the rest of the languages. At the age of five, Audrey enrolled in a boarding school in Elm to strengthen her English. In 1935, her father left home to volunteer for the British Union of Fascists, which left her in great shock. The documentary Audrey, directed by the 26-year-old British director Helen Cowan, tells the story of about Hepburn's suffering from an early age. She spoke in a press interview about the impact that her parents' divorce had on her life when she was six years old. Hepburn revealed that her father's departure was the first hard blow I received as a child. It was a shock that had a huge impact on me, and robbed me of a sense of security throughout my life. She added, one day he disappeared, and my mother told us that he had gone on a trip and would not return, my mother would not stop crying. I tried to be by her side, but when you're a child you can't understand these things. Audrey Hepburn lived with her mother after her father left, and after the outbreak of war in 1939, her mother took her back to Arnhem in the Netherlands to keep her safe. In Arnhem Audrey completed the ballet lessons she had begun to inspire. During the war and after the invasion of the Netherlands by Germany led by Adolf Hitler, Audrey changed her name to the pseudonym, Ida van Heemstra, because of the danger of the English name to her. Audrey and her family were greatly affected during the war due to the poverty and famine that the Netherlands witnessed at that time. They struggled to survive, as she once said, if we had known that we would be occupied for five years, we might have shot ourselves all. It is also noteworthy that Audrey supported the Dutch resistance during the war by delivering messages to them, according to an article published in the New York Times. After the war ended, Audrey pursued her passion for dancing. She studied ballet in Amsterdam and then in London through a scholarship in Notting Hill, but because of her thin build as a result of the malnutrition she suffered during the war, she was no longer able to pursue her dream of becoming a professional ballet. She turned her focus to her acting career. She made her stage debut in 1948 as a chorus girl in the satirical musical High Button Shoes. Audrey also appeared in 1951 in several secondary roles, such as One Wild Oat and Young Wives' Tales. While she was in Monte Carlo and performing a theatrical role, by chance, the French novelist, Colette, who was in the same hotel during the acting, saw her. Novelist Audrey was impressed and gave her the lead role in the Broadway play Gigi. This was Audrey's real breakthrough, as she received many positive praises from critics for her role. Newspapers talked about it. Its success was published in the New York Times, which led to its widespread and access to the public. She appeared on the cover of the famous Time magazine in 1953 and was known for her special and distinctive style. She has many prominent films to her credit, which made Audrey Hepburn an icon of beauty and cinema at that time. After their success, these films shed light on Audrey's distinctive talent and special beauty. In the film, Audrey played the absolute lead role alongside actor Gregory Beck. She achieved outstanding success and won many awards. While selecting actors to play the lead role, director William Wyler was impressed by Audrey's performance and considered her the girl he wanted for this role, describing her as an innocent, charming, and talented girl. The movie was a huge success at the box office and Audrey received many praises from the critics. As a result, Audrey won the Academy Award for Best Actress in 1954, and she also won the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Drama. In addition to the BAFTA Award for Best Leading Role, 
This was the beginning of her artistic prosperity. Away from films, Audrey returned to the stage again in 1954 through the Broadway fantasy play Ondine by French writer Jean Giraudoux. As usual, Audrey played a distinctive role, so much so that one critic said of her that she translated abstract ideas into the language of theatre with all lightness, ingenuity, and a beautiful and charming style. As a result, she won the Tony Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role in a Play. It so happened that in the same year she won an Academy Award for her role in the movie Roman Holiday, thus becoming one of the three actresses who won an Academy Award and a Tony Award in the same year. They are, Ellen Burstyn, Shirley Booth, Audrey Hepburn. The character of Audrey in the 1961 movie Breakfast at Tiffany is considered one of the most famous characters in the history of American cinema. The film has its own mark, especially in terms of Audrey's style and fashion, as her black dress in the opening scene of the film was considered a symbol of elegance in the 20th century. Her role in it is considered a major turning point and prosperity in Audrey Hepburn's artistic career and it is also considered one of her most prominent films. During her career, beauty icon Audrey Hepburn had many marriages and love stories. The first was her engagement to James Hansen in 1952. When Audrey fell in love with him at first sight, according to her description, this relationship did not continue. Because she felt that the nature of her work would affect them negatively and this marriage would not succeed, in a second experience, Audrey met the actor, Mel Ferrer, while they were attending a party for a mutual friend. They then participated in a play together, and this is where their romantic relationship began. On September 25, 1954, the couple announced their marriage in Switzerland. Audrey became pregnant but suffered two miscarriages. One of them was in 1955, a year after their wedding, and the second was in 1959, after she was injured while filming Unforgivable. Then she became pregnant with her first son, Sean. During the pregnancy, she stayed away from acting to avoid any danger. She gave birth to her baby on July 17, 1960. There were some rumors about her separation from her husband, but she denied them, and their marriage continued for 14 years until they separated on December 5, 1968. In the same year, Audrey met her second husband, the Italian doctor, Andrea Dotti, during a cruise with friends. She became pregnant with her son, Luca and his mother on February 8, 1970. Despite the mutual love between Hepburn and her husband, he was not faithful. He had pictures with more than 200 women with whom he had relationships outside marriage, and who suffered greatly because of him, according to testimonies of friends who knew the couple. Even Audrey at that time was in a relationship with one of the actors. After 13 years of marriage, the couple separated in 1982. During her life, Audrey took a great interest in charitable and humanitarian work because of the scourges of war she suffered during her childhood. In 1988, UNICEF appointed her as a goodwill ambassador for the organization. Her ability to speak multiple languages helped her in this role, which required traveling to different countries. She worked with UNICEF with all her heart, and that was a special reason for her because humanitarian organizations helped her when the war broke out in her childhood. She visited Ethiopia as her first work with UNICEF in 1988. She visited a children's orphanage containing approximately 500 children suffering from poverty and hunger and provided them with aid. As for the visit that was more painful, it was her visit to the state of Somalia, which she described as horrific. Despite seeing many famines, poverty, and painful humanitarian conditions, Somalia was the real nightmare. But she did not despair and was able, with the help of UNICEF, to provide safe drinking water near homes, considering that clean water is of great importance for good health. Audrey suffered from a rare type of cancer, colorectal cancer. It grew inside her slowly over the years, spreading widely until it became difficult to eradicate, as doctors confirmed after surgery. Hepburn returned home to Switzerland to be with her family in her final days. In 1993, beauty icon Audrey Hepburn died at the age of 63. Funeral ceremonies and burial took place in the village of Tolochinas, Switzerland. The ceremony was attended by her children, each of her ex-husbands, and a number of friends, including her life friend, Hubert de Givenchy. Owner of the prestigious brand Givenchy, and two UNICEF executives, Audrey posthumously won an Emmy Award and a Grammy Award.
The first was for the television series Gardens of the World with Audrey Hepburn, which she finished filming in 1993 and was shown after her death. The second is about her album The Enchanting Tales of Audrey Hepburn, which is a reading of classic children's stories. She is one of the few actors to have received a posthumous Grammy and Emmy Award. Beauty icon Audrey Hepburn touched the hearts of many through her films, her distinguished artistic career, and her many charitable works. She is an iconic figure that generations will remember forever.